Welcome into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. We've got a ton to cover, so and I'm really not even that witty to begin with, so we're just going to get right to it, Razor, and uh, welcome you in. Razor's back in Boston. I'm in New Jersey, so if you're on YouTube and you see this beautiful background behind me, just know you I, too could have that at a residence inn by Marriott. I was going to say, that's <laughs> such a residence inn special right there. You can tell when I saw you earlier, I was laughing. Oh, such my God. Inn. Same picture in every room. Stay in one. You see how stay in one. You stay in one. Stay in them all. all. Uh, this edition of Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor brought to you by our great friends over at Fazenda Coffee. Uh, the Fazenda Coffee people are bringing in mugs. They've got mugs left. We're going to talk about that. Also by Spark Sharpener and by Wormtown and their Craft Hard Seltzers that they've got out. We'll touch on those a little bit later, all of them. But as always, we thank them for supporting Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. What a fun game. Uh, what a game that at times, Razor, I found to be, when I mean predictable, meaning like here's the script. The Bruins do a lot of great stuff. I mean, they had a great third period for a while. The power plays, getting chances galore. All of a sudden, the Islanders, Varlamov, not all of a sudden, but he plays awesome, great, and then the Islanders get the goal. I mean, it's like a script. It just came through. But a very general assessment. An exciting game, yes. An intense game, yes. But I really thought a beautiful response game from the Boston Bruins, having to play the right way in many many facets that we'll get into, but that, that's how I took it. How did you take it? Yeah. I love the fact that they grew into the game. They did not push the pace at the start. They got the early goal from Smitty, which is huge. Him back in the lineup, the way that second line played was night and day. Mm -hmm. It was night and day. Oh my God. Night and day. Taylor Hall. What an animal. He was great. That, that they, they were awesome. The second line was awesome. So for them to get on the board early, and then the Bruins just settled in. They they didn't chase. They only had six shots halfway through the game. Ended up with 40, what's the final number? 42, mm -hmm. 41. So they got 35 shots in the second half of the game, but I love how they grew into that. They didn't go chase it right away. They played real good discipline. First period hockey was, it was fun to watch and, and, Nice to see that they weren't going to to chase. Yeah. At five on five, that Krejci line, 10 shots for, none against. <laughs> um, you know, it's crazy. You go to natural stat trick, which, you know, this is, you know, obviously the, the best Scott, uh, spot to go for this. Yeah. In 12 minutes and mm -hmm. 15 seconds, they outchance the opponent 13 to five. Again, this is at five on five. And Shots for 10, shots against zero. Uh, I believe their scoring chances for were 6 nothing as well, if I remember correct. Oh, no, 6, I guess 4. You, you know, scoring chance doesn't always mean the shot goes on net. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah. My frustration was they weren't out enough. I'd agree with that. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit there. It it it, it felt like now, granted, some of the power plays, I mean, it's a mixture, mm -hmm. right? Krejci's the, the up. The timing and, of them and, yeah, right. when they happen. Right, but I, I'm, I'm with but, you. But I, um, I thought we, we didn't see enough of them. Sorry. I, yeah, no, I'm with you. That's what, that's what I'm saying exactly. And I, I, yeah, yeah. I felt like again we saw a lot more of the fourth line at times than I thought that we would. Yeah. Have. What about you? I know. Yeah, thousand, absolutely, and and not. It wasn't like they had had it going great. Um, they, they I. Th they they did they played a lot and I don't know what the matchup was or, or what they were trying to do but it felt like the compared to the second line the way that second line is playing maybe it's Smith and his injury you're trying to manage that you but can't man you can't do you I, can't you gotta go you, you gotta go right. and 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 when they're out shooting ten nothing and and you're rolling the fourth line out I give them a defensive responsibility if you have to yeah uh, don't don't set everything up on a tee for them so so that that was my only thought. I was thinking that. And through the second, like every time these guys are out there, they're getting something done, but why are they not playing more? Yeah. Um, I really liked what Smitty did, you know, just getting back the goal in particular, obviously it was a great movement of the puck out of the zone Grizzly, And then you had uh, Taylor Hall coming in and pulling up in the right wing corner. And then, and then Craig to that mid slot area and Varlamov had no choice, but to move to his right a little bit, he had to follow the puck. Right. And then mm -hmm. Smitty sniped yeah. it up top left. Just a great, great play from, from start to finish. By the way, I thought the Bruins' D for a while early on were magnificent 
at uh, exiting the zone, supporting the zone, uh, play through the neutral zone too. Um, it was like they found areas of the ice where they anticipated would be open for outlet, and they really did a beautiful job. I thought Grizzlick was excellent at that for a while, especially in the game. They were. They, they were very, very good in the first first half of the second. They struggled. Mm-hmm. It seemed a little bit like the last second period where – and a lot of it's the, the forwards dumping it in and, and without any pressure on the Islanders, and they just come right back up the ice in between the change. And, and they had a hard time the first half. Second half, I thought the Bruins started breaking it right away. To your point, the D-men found the middle of the ice. They were doing a nice job, not just having to rim it around the boards. Mm -hmm. And Mike Riley was the star of all of that. As much as Charlie McAvoy is Charlie McAvoy, I thought Mm -hmm. Riley played his best game of the playoffs tonight, moving the puck, being decisive, and also finding the patience. Because that's what the Islanders do. They force you to make a play quickly into someone else but mm-hmm. if you can hold on to it and if you can just allow things to develop a little bit longer seems open up and i thought riley did a nice job doing that mike riley was excellent played 22 and a half minutes or so in this game and the way i'm just pulling up the amount of shots he had because he did have a couple that that reached the net that i was like whoa yeah he had seven attempts no. five of them on net, one crossbar that he won't even get credit for. And I'm not sure how he actually got to that that shot. It was almost in front of him. It was like a, a little yeah. open up kind of punch snap, and he got a lot on it. He did. I thought that hit Varlamov in the head. or so, And then the replay after, I'm like, wow, that hit the crossbar. That, act, that yeah. had a chance. And it really had some sizzle on it. Yeah, too. it did. I mean, it had some oomph to it. Um, listen, in general... We're going to get to the Barzell goal. We'll talk about it in a minute. But in general, I, I again, there were some times where I thought Connor Clifton looked really good again. I know. I, I mean, I, I did. He he had the, he, he you know, did. the Cliffy up the, until the, the up, up until the goal. He was noticeable for all the good reasons and not very noticeable in general. Just yeah. steady Eddie moving the puck he, and good. I have a note here. And, yeah, a, a note here, Razor. Numerous times. Bruins D-man in front of Varlamov, and he was there a couple of times. Carlo was there a couple of times, and he was in the zone. Obviously, Mike Riley was there. Charlie McAvoy. They they regularly not just supported, but then continued with the play. It was it was good? And there were a few times where I'm watching. I'm like, whoa, get back! And you know what? They did a good do- job. Not only getting back, but having support from their forwards too. Mm-hmm. So that was important to see, and that, that was that was great. They they. You know, the D were important for a while. Well, they're important all game, obviously, especially when they get down to 5D. Well, all right, let's get right to talking about Carlo. Let's, I mean, you know how we are here on Morning Brew, bud. We just, we go all over the place. Sometimes yeah. the ship needs a little better steering probably for me. But good hit. I'm okay with the hit. Were you okay with oh, the yeah. hit? Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, what Cal Clutterbuck does. That's what he yeah. does. It was, it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. He finished through. I mean, again, love Carlo to protect himself, maybe a little more if he could. Could he spin a little bit quicker there instead of perhaps putting himself there? I, I mean, it's so fast. The game looks so much slower on TV than it yeah, is. Yeah, of course. And you could see that play developing between Martin softly putting it in. They have timing plays, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And Cal Clutterbuck was there just about within a half a second of Brandon Carlo, and that's what that's what makes that line so effective. How they time their 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 placements, their dumps, etc. And, and this is how they tenderize the opponent. Classic Islanders. It was, and it's it's just unfortunate. I think Carlo was aware. He knew it was coming. He tried to absorb the boards. It just the way he his head hit the glass, you mm-hmm. know. And yeah. with a guy that's At- had you know the issues that he's had, that's that's the first thing I go to. It's like. Of course. Right away, you're like, oh boy, and it's it, it's not even you're not even worried about what's next game or, you know, sometimes when it's just a one off, uh, I'm not as concerned about it if it was the first mm-hmm. one. But when you have someone that has history, I, I understand what that means in, in the long run, and you're like, all right, this is, and he can't get up, and you know why he's not getting up. Um, you could see it when they they got in close on the camera, and Donnie's out there. Uh, he's trying to trying to figure things out and where his body is. He's trying to get himself. I, I felt like he was saying to himself, I know what happened. Yep. I know where I am. Yeah. I know I was hit hard. All that. Get yourself together. And just get off the ice. 
get off the ice, yeah. but make it seem not that bad. Yeah. Meaning, like, I, it's it's he wasn't out of it in the sense of I don't know where I am. I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. You he, you know, like the ones we've seen he, in the playoffs. It wasn't that. It was right. It was it, my head's not good. My feet right. are not here under me, but I need right. to try and get them there. Right, and I need I know don't grab your head. I mean, players think like yeah. this. Don't grab your head. Don't do the like, don't show. Yeah. Maybe I can get that, off the ice. And I don't have to go to the dark room. That's, exactly. that's what it looked they, like to me. Exactly. So he was trying to talk himself through it. As soon as he tried to get up, we knew that he couldn't. And then he kind of kind of slid over a little bit, you know, when he went off the ice there at the island. And, and, and you know, my heart just, it aches because, you know, I thought he was doing a great job with regard to Barzell. I thought he was out there an awful lot. Um, I feel like, same thing we saw against the Caps, though. Carlo, start slow, mm-hmm. start slow, gets going, gets going. I thought he was playing better. Yeah. Still not to the point where I know he could be, though. Yeah, not like opinion, 2019 but, you know. yet. And, and, and you're waiting. You, you know they're going to need that if they continue. Um, Cassidy yeah. did say that he saw him after the game and that he actually felt pretty good. So that's different than what I was expecting. I didn't think that would be the narrative. So take that for whatever it's worth, right? Well, like you said, uh, I mean, take it for what it's worth. I'm not going to read yeah. too much into it or not. Into yeah. it. I'm just going to – my expectations are is that he wouldn't play game four. Yeah. I know Butch said he's not going to rule him out. My expectations are you got the win. It's not saying that you don't want to go for the sweep on Long Island, but you oh, no. got that right. win. You don't push yeah. it now with this guy. Next man up in theory would be mm-hmm. Tenorti. We know that Kevin Miller can't play just yet. He's not with the team in Long Island. On Long Island, sorry. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that means he can keep skating at home and maybe there's a chance for game five mm-hmm. for Kevin Miller. Probably not worth getting into that conversation right now because it's all hypothetical. Um, a couple of things that to, to go through. This was, I don't know, if, would you call it a nasty game? I thought the second period got really physical. But I love the way that the Bruins were able to handle the wall play. And I thought both teams brought it. But, I mean, I thought it was exciting in that physical way. You know, I didn't think it was nasty. Yeah, it was. That's a, that's good physical yeah. for me. Um, I, I wouldn't have put it on nasty. I thought it was guys following through on yep. checks, taking uh, – taking checks to make plays just as much as anything guys knew they were going to get hit past the knew he was going to get like belted. there uh, yeah. was it yeah was it nelson in the middle that knew he was going to get hit by mcavoy yep. these guys like and, and you knew you were going to get it and you just took it and um that's that's hockey for me that that's good clean no one getting hurt physical great hockey. playoff hockey uh, i thought it was thought yeah it was fun. I, I, yeah it was fun it, and that, that that picked up the pace too because it was slow like what were the shot 10 to 6 or something halfway through like right. it was it was a little sleepy and then bang it started picking up pace the crowd got into it the physicality got into it guys put pucks on net um and and, and yes the bruins the, the bruins have no problem with that kind of a game they really don't. They can, and have. they have no problem generating chances against what is supposed to be this very stout, defensive-oriented team. And and I know the chances from outside aren't always, you know, Carolina throws pucks from everywhere, right? And that, so it doesn't always mean mm-hmm. if you have forty yeah. shots that you're creating good offense. But I felt like the Bruins were creating really good offense. I mean, I've got marks here in the second period. There was, remember, it was a. There was a three-on-three, three basically, Bergeron line, and then they created an opportunity, 88, or, or Pasternak got the chance off the rebound. I mean, they make they, they make plays happen against this Islander team. It's, it's not like they're getting stifled. They're getting through the neutral zone, and they're making plays. Now, again, I give the Islanders credit. They play their game. They hang in, man. No, they're hanging in. They're playing the rope-a-dope like nothing else. I mean, it's the rope. But, yes, it's a great point because – when the Bruins were losing to this team, right. they were getting 18 right. shots on net in the regular season. They were getting 23 shots on net, and they had no – this is different. The, these la, the, the, the last two games, they're getting 38, 39, 41 shots. And, and to your point, they're not just throwing everything on net. They're getting high-quality opportunities, and it, it, it looks different than what it did it, with the it does 18 look, it shot, feels different. one nothing loss in, exactly. in January. I mean, it this, yeah, it this does. Is, it feels I mean, much different. Varlamov was excellent. 
he was excellent in this game. Yeah, he I was, so. as was Tuca. He was. Oh my God! That save on Krejci. <laughs> what a read! What a what a read to get over there because Hall's right. look still can shoot that, and he he makes a perfect pass. Krejci hits he it. He got I mean, it. That's a everything great save. on it. I mean, you know. He, yes, so I have a, a mark here in the second yes. period, too. Uh, after that Varlamov save off of uh, the pass, you said, from Hall to, to Krejci, uh, Richie had an opportunity. Uh, Lausanne had an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, the one By the front. way, good for, Jay, for, for Lausanne. He was very solid was good. coming was back very good. after that game yep. where he wasn't great and he had some bad luck, too. But good for Jeremy Lausanne, who played 17 minutes on 20 shifts, Five total attempts, three of them reached the net, two hits, and he had two block shots. That's a good line. Yeah, a very good line. And it bodes very well for whatever's coming in game four now with yeah. the issues back there. Let's talk about that right. for a minute. Let me bounce around for a minute. We're, we're going to just assume. We'll, make it, we'll, we'll pretend Carlo can't play. So who do you move to that right side? Because you, now you've yeah, obviously you you move Cliffy up, and I, I mean I guess you're moving you're going to move Tenorti in, and are you moving Lausanne to the right side? He played yeah. the right last year. Remember, he did play some of the right side. I don't know about Tenorti if he can play the right side. I don't think I don't either. Put the big boy Maybe on there. the penalty kill without, if you're if you're using him to illegal. eliminate one timers, you know, but. But that's it. I, I, I would think it'll be it'll be piecemeal, no matter what. I mean, look for look for the the top two or three guys to play a yeah. big minutes in that game, whatever. And you're just you're basically running the the three or four guys off the other side. It's a scary proposition because right. yeah, because you're you are you're right. You're running those three. You're running McAvoy, Grizzlick, and you're running and 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 Mike Riley. And I guess Cliffy. Cliffy's yeah. going to probably push 22 minutes in that game. Gonna, yeah. Going to have to. Uh, have to. All right, let's do this. Let's. T I want to talk about the third and fourth line. Yep. Well, How much time do we have? <laughs> we know, or do we know? We, I guess we don't need <laughs> – we might not need much time. Uh, fourth what line's got to get some What do you stuff. do there because – Bring Coolman. Coolman's got to come back in, shake it up. Let give give them but, a little love. So are you? Are, but are you? It's not here's the deal. Sean Corrali, a personal favorite of mine. I've known Sean for a long time. I will admit. But bad penalty. Cannot take mm -hmm. that Horrible. late in the game. Can't. No. Um, felt like the fourth line. You know, Curtis Lazar has meant an awful lot to that fourth line. But right. Thank God he's there. Because he's covering up a lot right. of deficiencies. So, but if you if you're saying to bring in Kuhlman, what what do you? I mean, you're taking out Wagner then, but yet you you you, you know what I might even do is I might move Corrali up over into Brus spot, put the Brusque on the third line or on the fourth line, and just play them less. And and try and play. I'm the gonna third guess line if more. if I don't know. I'm gonna guess if Kuhlman comes in, it might be for DeBrusque, Believe it or not. I, no, I, I believe that's I, I wouldn't see be, I think I, I think what's gonna happen in, and I think you start piecemealing third right. and fourth line I think together, it's a, it, right like similar to the D like just don't you don't have to roll them together if it if Richie Coyle and Corrali are going or if it's Richie and then you put Richie with Lazar at time like whatever you need to do just start mixing those in guys the third around. period Richie and DeBrus did not play much a couple of minutes each yeah. Um, my guess is that Kuhlman comes in. My guess would be for DeBrusque. And Corrali, the thing that he's got going for him is that he's their only left shot face-off guy. And he does kill a lot of penalties. Kill. And I think that saves yeah. him. Um, I did yeah. not like that penalty. I didn't. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, come on, don't call it. It was like, you can't, how do you not, you can't not call it. Yeah, he's standing two feet away. So, and it wasn't like it was if he cross checked him, he get the puck and go right to the net. It was like five guys were in the corner, like yeah. didn't make any sense. But 
Got away with it. It did get away with it. All right, coming up after we talk about our sponsors just for a minute here, uh, let's talk Tuca and let's talk Farlamov. Let's talk both yeah. goalies here. Uh, time to give our way our Fazenda Fresh Cup. I, I think that Craig Smith, Shooter Smith, fresh in the lineup, yeah. only missed one. But I'm surprised he's back, and I'm thrilled that he looks so good. But what a nice release of the shot. And let's give him a fresh cup, a nice pipe and fresh hot cup for his performance there, uh, making a difference on that line, as you pointed out. He played 1445. He had four shots on goal, a couple of hits, looked fully engaged to me on the ice, which is a, a great sign. Um, and, you know, no back. Exactly. Down, no. Exactly. So, Fazenda, uh, FazendaCoffee.com uh, slash morning brew. If you go there, that is where you have a chance still to uh, get a mug, a morning brew at Chaffin Race. They are gorgeous mugs, if I do say so myself. Uh, they ordered a bunch, and uh, actually a lot have already gone out. Our buddy Pete from Fazenda Coffee let me know. He says, this has been awesome. There's been a bunch that went out, <laughs> but they've got some left, $35 or more on your order. You get a free mug with that included in the order. So FazendaCoffee.com. These roasters are out of Boston. They are actually in Dedham right now. They are local, just like we are local, and uh, produce all different types, all different blends of coffee, all different roasts. We love them. Snap Chill, by the way, we got some more for you and RC uh, delivered as well, so everybody's going to be good. Go to fazendacoffee.com slash morningbrew. Use that. Uh, also, we'd like to thank Spark Sharpener uh, for being with us now for the last couple of weeks. Wonderful people over there, sparkshockey.com. Right now, if you use the code MORNINGBREWRAZER, you will get free shipping on the Spark Skate Sharpener. That is just the easiest, most wonderful piece of hockey apparatus that I have had in a long time. It may be ever. Maybe ever. The- no, I buzzed them again today. No, Decky, Decky had a practice. It's just, all right, I got five minutes. No problem. I can go downstairs, sharpen It's great. Stuff. All you got to do, it, I'm it's telling you, folks, if you're a hockey player and you got players that are playing in your family, if there's two of you, it more than pays for itself in a year. Yeah. And you get free yeah. shipping again using the code MORNINGBREW at sparks with an X, S-P-A-R-X, hockey.com. Go there. You will see what Ray's and I are talking about. You will thank us for that. And lastly, we'd love to thank Wormtown, uh, the brewery, uh, they are putting out their new craft hard seltzers. They're in uh, four different flavors, including like lemon lime, and they've got a great orange one and a cran apple. Uh, this is a, a, a new product that you can drink just about anywhere, anytime. 100 calories, gluten free, two grams of carb, five percent alcohol. Perfect for all outdoor activities. It won't be the first hard seltzer you try. They just want it to be your last. Go to WormtownBrewery.com/slash/ourseltzers. And check them out. A lot of information there, so thank you to Warm Top. All right, th- go get a workout. Go have a go have a seltzer. You can get a workout in any guilt free seltzer. I, I think you know what we got to do that this weekend. Uh, Saturday night, I'm disappointed that uh, not going to get wow. together. 92, it's looking. It's it's showing in in <laughs> Boston. On is that right? Is that still accurate? Saturday that's and hot. Sunday. Yeah. That's By the hot. way, that's did hot. you think that the ice looked like you, at yeah. at the Coliseum? Yeah. It, 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 it certainly many, did. I got random texts from people like in Canada watching, like, "What's well, going on down there?" I, I mean, it's old, old ice, wait, they, old they've ice. had issues. I was there for a bunch of well, four or five years, and they did have some issues with the facility. It's a small building and everything, but the ice was always, eh, you know, not great. Earlier on, it used to be a better place for ice, but then they had a bunch of issues with the facility. And I mean, I was watching guys. I watched Marshan, you know, Marshan going flying. He, the guy could skate on concrete yeah and i saw numerous right? players he's going down numerous players so the bad news is is it's saturday i'm trying to look up the weather in the area on saturday <laughs> it's got to be hotter it's got to be more humid in strong island than it is in massachusetts it is yeah you're right bad hair day for right me. uh 91 yeah, it degrees it's showing oy, oy. Oy. all right let's uh let's talk tuca what did you like most about his game what did, I thought it I mean, from my layman's terms, he, he was, was damn good. He was so good. The Again, talked about it how many times. The, the two saves he made standing mm-hmm. up, shots coming from just above the hash marks, and he knows it's going sh- top corner. He just eats it, no problem. Late in the second period, I forget who shot it, but 
came, coming off Tuca's right side, and he just made a right shoulder save. Standing up, no problem. His He was very calm through traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and all the way through, on the penalty kill, the chances they had, um, he was all over all of them and really reading the play well. So it was, it was, and I, and I said, it's a mace at the start of the game. He's going to, he's going to play really well tonight after the overtime loss. He just always comes back. He just, he's ready for that next game. And, uh, he was there for the guys all night tonight. There's no question. And I, I know the goal was the wraparound. Um, I've talked about his hockey sense and how he reads the play. That that play where it goes behind the net to his left side and Barzell's behind the net. Mm-hmm. He he expects and understands that somebody has to take the weak side post. Right. He has the strong side post all the time. That's the goalie's job. That's his job. Is that that's because that's the where the puck went behind the net there on the strong side. So so even though it could that's be right. going to the other side, he has to immediately take that strong side. That's right. And because Barzell's standing there, if it, if you think about the opposite or, or what could have happened, mm-hmm. if he goes flying to the right post right away, Barzell just easily comes out to the left side stuffs it. And, and stuffs it. And Clifton should be on that back post because he's the right defenseman. Mm-hmm. The center should be going over there because that's where the place is. Lausanne's right. got the left side. So that's why that confusion happens from Tuca's point of view. Clifton goes the wrong way, Lazar's over on the wrong side, and Wagner doesn't collapse. And that's what allows the Barzell to come out. Now, the one thing I will criticize Tuca on is that typically he has a skate inside the post. Right. But I think that's a panic move. I think that's like, oh my gosh, I'm way behind because I didn't think this was happening. I just have to get there. And that's what allows Barzell to get the third whack because his pad... And his skate isn't locked into the post. He, he had no leverage, it looked like to me. He had no leverage. That's right. Which typically, all the goalies in the NHL have so much leverage on the post because they're locked in, whether it's that shin lock or the toe lock. They're, they're up against the post. He wasn't up against the post at all. He just had his leg there. And that's why Barzell was able to, to, to take it in because he had no leverage. Clifton had to be on that post. He, had to be, he chose to go at, initially to the, we'll call it the strong side, to the near post. Yeah. And he needed to instead be on the other side. I mean, that was that was obvious. Wagner tried to kind of came back at the end, but he, but he's in the same spot where he he can't. It's hard for him to read off. I'm not going to put it really on Wagner. No, no, he, it's, it's, exactly. He, he tried, yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of yeah. came back I, there, but it's hard yeah. to right. Yeah. Like I might have said, I, I might have said that Wagner should. He should. It's not really on him. It's right. If your D, if your strong, your weak side D goes to cover the weak. We'll call it the weak side, or in this case, the right post. Yeah. He locks that down. Most likely that play doesn't happen, or the goal doesn't yeah. happen. That's right. Barzell gets a goal. He's been better the last two games. I mean, he was really good in game two. Yep. He was good. He was active here. Hey, I noticed, I, I made a mark on a few times. We had a Barzell breakaway where he, sh- he shot, and another one where he went to a backhand too, which was a yeah. good good read by Rass. He went to his backhand, so I think he knew where he had to go. But I had a, like three chances that all went oh at the right shoulder of top Tuka. blocker with top blocker well not even top blocker top top shoulder really almost yeah and that's where the goal was basically scored in overtime because Sizikis are we seeing a trend yeah. or is this coincidence in your opinion no well I think I think tonight was more of a trend I think the Sizikis goal Tuka just didn't play it properly he didn't get all the way over and, and you can see that from behind. But I think tonight they tried to key on that, that maybe that, that's a weakness. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't. And, and was it Beauvillier or was it Clutterbuck who had the breakaway in the first period that went blocker side? It was one of those two guys. I thought it was Beauvillier. Uh, yeah, so Beauvillier. I think it was Beauvillier. It was Beauvillier, yeah. He, 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 went, yeah. he went blocker side, yes. exactly like Sezikis. Right, exactly. And, and But Tuka was all over that. I, he made a bit of a mistake in overtime. He wasn't going to let guys beat him there again tonight. So I think, I, I think it's more of a, a, a product of the overtime goal. What happened? What we saw tonight? I don't think we'll see that again. Interesting. Yeah, I just I made these these notes. They're going. They're, they were shooting. They were it, shooting it, there. up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, overtime. Let's get to this goal. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. 
Um, I guess we're saving the best for somewhat last, but you know there was so much other stuff that had happened. The Bruins, again, had a third period that was damn good. And t- in fact, until Barzell scored, it was 19-4 with the shots for the Bruins <laughs> up to that point. I know. And, again, Brazilier had a breakaway that he went to the back end, and he had to make a, you know, had to make a save. But that, that's part of it. Uh, Charlie McAvoy, beast mode again. Phenomenal. Love it, folks. Embrace this kid because Chucky is he's here for you. He's a future Norris Trophy winner. At least I think he's got legitimate potential right for that. Um, I'm in the overtime. I think it was at that point in the overtime. I just want to make sure I have this right. It was five two shots for the Islanders on this one. Razor. They were mm-hmm. they were playing real. It was seven yeah. two attempts, and it was five two shots. Scoring chances were four nothing in favor yeah, the of the out. Islanders. Great rebound chance. Great two rebound. Yes. Saves from They're not even. Time. I go to natural stature. They're not even counting the Martian shot as a scoring chance no. <laughs> because it really wasn't. Technically, it isn't. So, and the Bruins had, how many times did they ice it to? I mean, they were, I get it. The Islanders, I get it, came out and, and they had the jam. They had the juice. They were going in OT. Yeah. But then they do a nice little thing. The Bruins finally get the puck. They settle it. They move it up to the other side. McAvoy accelerates through the neutral zone, gets it in, and just gets it over to, uh, over to uh, Marchand coming down the left wing wall. And he releases this. Literally from almost the bottom of the face-off circle on the left side, yeah. left-wing side. Yeah, it was below the hash marks. How the hell does this one go in on Varlamo? Well, for, there's an awesome angle from behind that, that really – so he he overplays short side because we see – how many times do we see guys go short side there, right? Try and go mm-hmm. right up around the helmet. And, and I Varlamov doesn't necessarily read the shot. He just goes right there, tries to take short side – and it opens up a keyhole on the far side. I mean, Brad could shoot that for seven hours tomorrow <laughs> afternoon. The exact, right. and they could have the exact same play, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna go in. It's one of those the lottery shots from half ice in, in the the little United Center. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those were awesome. Yeah, no Actually, it was even better at the old Chicago Stadium. <laughs> Trust me, it was even better there. That was that was must see oh, intermission entertainment, best. though. Especially best. when the third contestant came out <laughs> in a different era. Oh my god. One day, folks, we will do a politically incorrect <laughs> podcast. That's <laughs> and right. talk about what used to happen at the old Chicago Stadium. Oh boy. So that that's what it was, and it, it just Varlamov just got a little off, didn't read the shot and play it. He just tried to get to his spot in the net and take away short side and leave it to Brad Marshawn, the overtime here. I didn't even game. know it went in right away. No, I know it was it was such a non-play. It was like I wasn't I wasn't really focused. I thought it was right. like a dump in. I, I wasn't. I thought the puck went wide, and all of a sudden Johnny Forsen and the other, they score. I'm like, <laughs> what? Oh, it's, you know? that hurts so much. It hurts so much for the team, for him. It's a big, yeah. It's a bit debilitating that one. Yeah, it it it's it's. Um, I mean, Barry Trotz will take the positives. Yeah, he will be like, okay, all good. But that has to feel. That's got to be tough. Um, there was so much concern that the Bruins going into the, you know, twelve thousand fan jam coliseum there we wouldn't be able to handle it. We talked about. I mean, I thought they handled it well. I didn't love the penalties that. I look the Marshan one, okay, but but don't we know that he's going to probably do something, right? But yeah, ugh, you know, no, the other I, I kind of thought bad. the Pasternak one bad. was. Yeah, yeah was I, like, I mean, why are they calling this? And, and even the, what, why are they calling what that? What was the one? The the one of the Islanders ones was bad too. Where it's like, why are you calling that? It's like, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't do. know. Sometimes you, you you don't know, uh, and let's not even get off on the, on the yeah, rails yeah, on that yeah. one. Yeah, I, I don't, but but I still you know look the Bruins for the most part handled the the intensity, the emotion. They handled it really well. Yeah, they they and, took the crowd out of it. They they really I agree. did. They 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 slowed the game down really well. Yep. especially going into a place that has been billed as uh, you know. The hardest place to play. And it can be tough. But let's not forget that the Bruins are led by Patrice. (laughs) And they've got a guy in Brad that relishes that. And they've got a guy in McAvoy now. And Craig. And Tuca. 
Why Krejci was good. He was very he was good. good. He was very. He was good. he was Krejci. Yeah, that was awesome was to good. see. So all right, two one day off, two one day off. I mean, they'll have an optional practice. Charlie McAvoy will take an ice bath mm-hmm. and you know whatever. Um, man, there's just not a lot to do around that area, and the Bruins aren't vaccinated. You know, they're not two weeks out yet, so there's going to be like hanging out at the Long they're Island Marriott at the. Tomorrow. They will sleep. They will walk around the parking lot. Maybe they can get into a cab, go to Garden City, and get a Starbucks if they can sit outside, which they should be able to. Uh, I'm listen. I lived 15 minutes from the Coli, from the Coliseum. You get 10 minutes away, five, 10 minutes away from the Coliseum. There's areas that are great, awesome. Just that immediate area, just not so good. Um, but now you put yourself into a good spot again. Let's see what the Bruins can do. Let's hope the best for Brandon Carlo. If he doesn't play, we both expect Tenorti to be in the lineup. Uh, we both expect something to happen. I got to think Carson Kuhlman comes in. Is there another? I mean, do you consider putting Trent Frederick in? That's the other thing. Do I? I don't know. I I, I don't know yet. I I wouldn't. I I'm, I'm not putting two guys in. I, I'm gonna put Kuhlman in, and 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 to your point, whether it's DeBrusque, whether it's Wagner, and just put okay. those guys in a blender on the back. It just Wills. it's a lot to put two new guys in. Frederick. Emotional kid, but you know, I mean, what you know, yeah. coming into that series, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Let's see what what Butch talks about on uh, on, on the off day, and then the Bruins are back at it Saturday evening, seven fifteen uh, is when the game. I don't know if that's face off or when they're coming on the air. I'm not sure, but all right, all said and done, Bruins win two to one in overtime. They're up two to one uh, in the series over the New York Islanders. A lot of fun stuff going on for the Bruins. Again, they'll have a, an optional skate, and then they'll get themselves ready for Saturday afternoon on. Long Island. Maybe they'll go out for a few slices of some good New York thin crust. And there is some good New York thin crust within about five or ten minutes of there. That's going to wrap up this morning brew with Jaffe and Razor. Thanks again to Fazenda, our wonderful friends over there, Spark Sharpener and Wormtown, and their craft brewed hard seltzers for being a part of the show. Everybody, enjoy this victory. Let's hope for the best for BC. And uh, have a wonderful Friday. And as always, enjoy your wonderful Morning Brew.